Okay, hello guys and welcome back to Chris Flies Planes. Chris here of course and today we are doing a QRA which is a quick reaction alert startup flight in the Tornado GR1 from Coningsby in Microsoft Flight Simulator X. Uh, so QRA is the uh, it's quick reaction flight so uh, RF Coningsby covers the quick reaction alert south which is basically everything south uh, well, let's go from the middle of the UK down and then there's also the QRA North, which is from, I believe, RAF Lossy Mouth, which used to be from RAF Lucas. Um, basically, these are the guys who respond to threats in the air, be it Russian bombers or uh, unresponsive airliners, all this kind of thing. Uh, it's what my dad used to fly. Um, it's really cool. So today we were planning to do a full flight, but uh, I've had an incredibly shit night. Um, Windows decided to do a two hour upgrade, which was a nightmare. And then after that, all of my textures for the tornado were broken. I had to reinstall the tornado. And generally, it's just been an absolute nightmare of a night. So what we're actually going to do today, guys, is a little bit of a tutorial on how to go from cold and dark in the tornado, so all of the systems off and power off, to uh, a state of QRA, so like cockpit readiness, i.e. Um, I was chatting to my dad about this. Basically, it's 15 minutes. so. The pilots are going to be asleep somewhere near here, or certainly hanging out somewhere near here. And from when they're scrambled, they are 15 minutes away from being in the air. So we're going to leave the airplane in this state. This is a bit of a tutorial, and it's what we're going to be doing in a flight very soon for our 100 subscriber special. So let's get going. Um, I've actually got a flight plan, uh, sorry, a checklist in front of me, a physical checklist. I can't show you it because various reasons. Uh, I'm not allowed to show you, but anyway, we're going to go through that, and we're going to just go through all the steps it takes to leave the aircraft in a ready state to go for QRA. So to go, we're going to go down to the left panel here. So we're doing the initial checks now. So crash bar is aft, which is here. Voice. Uh, let's actually pull up the 2D panels uh, just to make things a bit easier for everyone. Uh, so that's crash bar is aft. And then up here we have the voice recorder should be stopped. Uh, CCS as required, I'm not sure what as required is, but antenna should be upper, one to four selected, which is somewhere here I guess, and CVR button out. Right click that. Okay, flap and wing levers should be set to actual positions. So if we just jump in here, we're at 25 and flaps up, and you can see that that is the case if we go to the outside view. Okay, cross drive clutch should be open, which it is. Landing gear lever should be down. LP cock should be guarded, so we just jump back to this view. Uh, these guys should be guarded. Uh, mass should be lock safe green flag. Uh, which I'm guessing it is. Uh, so this is the safe thing here. So this is all the weapon stuff, which obviously isn't modelled in FSX. Uh, late arm should be guarded, which it is up here. Hydraulic should be both set to auto. So we jump over. I uh, believe it's here. These should both be on auto. Okay, brake handle should be set to park, which it is. You can see it flashing bottom left. Uh, brake handle, I believe, is around here somewhere. Uh, dump master switch ensure close. I'm not sure where that is uh, over here somewhere, but I'm sure it's closed. I've not seen that actually in game. Air system master should be on. This is down here, I believe. Do -do 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 -do. It should be on. And then when rear cockpit checks complete, we're not doing rear cockpit checks because the rear cockpit is not clickable, though if you actually look we can jump into we can't jump into the rear cockpit okay so I need to fix that um, but anyway uh, rapid takeoff panel just going to the middle here all switches to flight except fuel boost pumps off pito heaters windscreen heaters so, so on on these guys are off and on on and on on, I believe that should be right. Throttles should be at HP shut, which if I just pull up this, you can see that they are all the way back. HP shut is here, then idle, max dry, max reheat, and combat. 
Uh, relights check. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm sure it's fine. Ignition should be off, which it is now. Generators should be both off with fair lights on. As you can see there, that is fine. APU switch as required. So we're going to be starting from ground power. So we're going to go to external AC all the way down. Uh, APU auto test, which is over here maybe. Okay. Uh, APU caption on CWP, that's fine. Nav light should be on. Uh, and flashing if we're starting the APU. Uh, this is over in this one here. I'm going to turn my head sideways so I can see this. Okay, that is set. ADI should be erecting, which is a funny word. I'm not sure how to do that in this model, so we're going to ignore that. So let's jump over to the next page here. Check with rear cockpit, then connect external power or start APU. So we're going to connect the external power now. So we'll click this button here. Okay. We've got rear cockpit checks, which we're going to disregard. Then let me just consult my Wii booklet here. So I'm just going to stop that sound because it's extremely loud. We have external checks next. We're actually going to skip the external checks because they don't really work in this plane. We can have a look outside the plane if we really want to. But anyway, we're going to skip those and we're going to go back to our op readiness page. And weapons checks, again, we're going to skip because uh, we do not have weapon systems modelled in this plane. Pilot, internal check, G11 to G14. So let's jump in here. Uh, internal checks, G11, here we go. So, ejection sheet checked. Um, again, that's not modelled, so that is fine. Internal NVG lights as required, they are fine. MDC, I'm not sure what that means, but again, I don't believe it's model, that's fine. Canopy jettison pin is stowed. Oxygen is on, let's go down here and bang the oxygen on. And check, you can see it's over here, these flashy lights here just show the oxygen is pulling and kind uh, of coming in out. The UHF radio should be TR and G, so that is over. Ooh, where is that? Here. So let's just bosh that up to TR and G. When radio checks complete, radio checks, let's say, are complete. APU start, if not already running. Let's jump over here. We're going to go to uh, start. Okay, gonna start up the ground power again, guys. That's APU start. You can see the run light flashing. Fuel. Uh, we're gonna check the contents down here. I'm just gonna test that. That is absolutely fine. And then we're gonna set the cross drive clutch to auto. Uh, left and right hydraulics should be in the white, uh, sorry, uh, let's have a look at that, should be uh, 50 to 110 bars, they're fine I'm sure, generators should uh, both be on, which they are, CWP should be AC, DC, true, and generator lights out, which they are. Battery is fine. Let's go to the next page here. Gonna leave the canopy open here, guys. Because uh, again, we're leaving it in the mode where we can just jump in and go. Cross drive clutch should be set to open. Radar altimeter should be set on, which it is. HUD should be on, which it is. And TACAN should be set to TR. Which 
which it is. We're going to go down to the left console here. Okay, jack release handle should be stowed with red tail tail intact, which it is. Uh, canopy jettison handle should be stowed with a red tail tail intact, which it is. The emergency air brake should be guarded, which it is. Emergency flap guarded, which it is. Anti-dazzle should be off, which it is. Spills, which is over here, should be off and a fair light on. Seat should be guards down with ready light on, there you can see that is. Wonder lamp should be checked and stowed, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure it's fine. Throttles should be uh, full movement, which they are, and then back to HP uh, shop. Okay, emergency landing lever gear should be locked, which it is. Landing taxi lights should be off, which they are. The flat slat air brake and wing indicator sh are all showing fine. Flaps should be fully up, actually. Let's just put them fully up. Selective emergency jettison should be uh, confirmed both buttons out, which they're fine. Maybe the anti-glare shield up on the left here. Lift up indicator should be showing OL, which it is. TR should be norm with indicators blank, and that is. Hook light is out. AOA indicator is up here. Flag is away. HUD should be checked and set, which is fine. Accelerometer is fine. Approach progress indicator is fine. Flight refuel light is full and out. And standby compass is fine. Main instrument panel, landing gear is three green lights, NWS lights are out, MMS is set as required, that's again missile systems, that's not an issue, autopilot throttle light is out, flight instruments condition, ADI is erect, uh, alt set zero, is fine and in a Reese okay I'm sure that's fine it's not quite there trim gauge of condition selector indications are out HSI modes test modes as required and set to attack The UHF remote indicator is fine. Engine instruments check flags away, they're fine. Fuel flow is zero, which is fine. On the right quarter panel, EPS should be off and light out. CWP, we're gonna test uh, one and two. Brake pressure gauge should be ACC 150 bar minimum. Um, uh, that's fine, I'll check it right down there. I'm going to go down to the right console. ILS should be off. RHWR. Not sure what that is. Display selector all other switches as required. Let's have a look around here. Uh, I can't see that. This uh, checklist I'm reading from is for a slightly different aircraft, so you don't know what's going on there. TACAN should be fine. TBT datum switch should be low. Engine control should both be on lane one. Throttle rock test indicator should both be white. Uh, fuel control panel, flight refuel should be both off, which they are. Probe should be in. Where's probe? Oh yeah, that is fine. Sequence should be norm, which it is. 
cross feed should be auto and all other switches should be aft or guarded which they are go into the environment control panel and we have rain dispersal is off standby windshield demister is off oxygen should be tested cabin heat should be auto just test this quickly and that is fine cabin heat auto canopy demister should be on auto cabin alternator should be conditioned and that is fine and intakes anti-ice should be auto fail light out press test green light on then off fuel gauge temperature gauges condition and they are fine lamps test those and they're fine and MVG is required that is fine okay so that is our internal checks uh, for operational readiness right hydraulics should be on which is up here navigation checks are fine we're not doing those and that is on state guys let's jump up to the next page okay so guys that is the process you need to do to put this plane in a op readiness state so what I'm actually going to do here is just going to save this flight going to save this as tornado op readiness eg xc which is the ical for Coningsby and it's going to be saved and some reason when we save that we actually lose all our sounds which is fine by me because it was exceptionally loud in my ears so just to go from here so this is now considered op readiness state so at this point the plane is just sat on the apron basically ready to go so what we do from here let's just do a very quick startup just to show you what we would then do so if scrambled from check-in which is where we're basically at so if this plane is scrambled to do a QRA flight so a quick reaction alert flight ground crew would be alerted SW noddy caps and fuse covers removed as ram protective covers and fuse covers removed we're going to ignore that because that's nothing to do with the simulator and then we would go down and start the right engine so I believe ignition needs to be on for this and then we would flick this over to right engine maybe need to be on auto here okay what I think is happening guys when I saved it it's actually kind of killed the ground power so anyway what we're going to do here is uh, end the video now so again this is a tutorial on how to put a a Tornado GR3 into a state of op readiness this is going to be very useful for me on an upcoming video uh, I'm sorry we're not doing any flying today guys honestly I did want to do a full fly and do everything but it's just been an absolute nightmare tonight I hope you enjoyed it anyway and I hope you found it very informative uh, tomorrow we're going to record another fly where we're going to go from op readiness uh, start the engines and get up in the air as quick as possible again as I said earlier we're going to go 15 minutes from basically when the ground, uh, so pilot and nav are potentially in bed or you know in the whatever mess room, and then getting to the aircraft and taking off should be 15 minutes. So we're going to test that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this flight, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. And most importantly, please do comment below. I love hearing from you guys, and I'd love to hear what I've done wrong or any questions you have. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much.